you can get significant fat loss out of it, but this is hardcore, hardcore 90s risky. bodybuilding. Just risky. It's risky and hardcore 90s bodybuilding. And I haven't done it in years. Insulin, pre fast mm. cardio. Should we discuss this or should we? It's a bit, it's a bit. Could be touchy. <laughs> Could be touchy, yeah? I'm now we got to think it. Want. It's up to you. Not really something so, I'd recommend people doing, but beef. So before, before glucagon became available mm -hmm. and before retrotrutide and those kinds of compounds became available, I was an adamant user mm -hmm. of intramuscular insulin. One wow. to two I use. I am. Beef, fast. Before huh? fast cardio. Super yeah. fast acting. Yeah. Yumalog. Um, the hypoglycemia is brutal. <laughs> lasts for yeah. about 15 yeah it lasts for about 15 minutes then the glucagon gets mm -hmm. dumped and then you get a, a significant drop of adipose tissue right the triglycerides mm -hmm. and the fatty acids and then also um glucose coming from uh, or from the glycogen stored in your liver and otherwise you get a good amount of gluconeogenesis from the the triglyceride backbone right the glycerol backbone from adipose tissue. So in the beginning, you really are hypoglycemic. Then you can see your blood glucose levels goes up. And then your cardio session is yep. done when blood glucose levels are back in range again. And it could be 20 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on, you know, the amount of uh, dumpage, dumpage that you get. You can get significant fat loss out of it. Uh, but this is hardcore, hardcore 90s risky. bodybuilding. Just risky. It's risky and hardcore 90s bodybuilding. And we're, it, then... I haven't done it in years, and I haven't recommended it in a very long time. It does yeah. work crazy, though. It works dangerous. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But it's but it's outdated, in my opinion. Um, yep. Yeah. Dean, did now. you ever try it? Dean, did you no. ever try it? No. No, but Kurt? I've no. I've had plenty of like hypoglycemic attacks during cardio, Tony. Assume yeah. what it's like. Um, yeah, I go hype on my own. No need to, for help. Yeah. Um, no. And they're, they're brutal, those hypo attacks where you can't really do anything if you're that hardcore and committed to your cardio. You're just waiting, like you said, until your blood sugar balances itself out. Um, a couple of times I've had, um, like, uh, we've left caffeine off so far where I've gone mm -hmm. hypo in the middle of cardio. And this is when I used to do stupid cardio, like an hour of cross train or an hour of walk wow. on a treadmill. You know, yeah, you, had, that's what I you know, you had a, a coach who's like, yeah, an hour of cardio. And back then you're like, okay, whatever you say. But in your head, evening, dude. you know, yeah, you're sort of questioning your head. Do I, really, yeah, do I really need to be doing this? <laughs> um, And just by experience, I'd have like a can of, an energy drink with caffeine, you know, a, a sugar free energy drink um, and the caffeine itself. And you go hypoglycemic, mm -hmm, kick, yeah. you know, stimulating an adrenergic response to help speed up balancing your blood sugar. Um, not that wise if you're doing evening cardio and you down like a, an energy drink at that hour of the night, but it helps take you out of that edginess where you yeah. feel like you're just going to fall mm -hmm. off the cardio machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Simpler times. Back yeah. in the day, when we didn't have all these peptides and shit available, or so when protocols. life didn't matter. Yeah, when life didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna put it in F tier, even though I, I did use it a lot. Um, I think there's much better opportunities out there, and I don't think anybody has a reason to do that nowadays. No. Um, even, even though I, I did, I, I did it so many times. Even the uh, outdated advice of injectable L carnitine with injectable insulin. Um, quite, quite, oh, a, yeah. <laughs> quite, quite a popular stack with like bikini athletes, and then I'm sort of questioning, you know, yeah, the true. ones that don't want to do PDs or hard PDs to be told, uh, yeah, one IU of insulin alongside 200 milligrams of injectable L carnitine, and uh, just don't crash your car on the way to the gym. Yep. You can just take a gram of oral L carnitine and a gram of BCAs. And then you would get a similar insulinotropic effect. Not that mm -hmm. it makes any difference. No. Because it absorbs over the day. And it's same with creatine. Yeah, you need insulin to help it absorb. Dude, you're getting creatine all day from your food. And then from a supplement, yeah. it's going to absorb. And it's not like it absorbs and it's available right away. No. Right? It just replenishes what you're, what's already yeah. present. Um, the reason why we take carnitine pre-cardio is because you're moving a lot. So you get blood flow. So it gets to the area. But the insulin, it... it yeah, 
I, I took the carnitine with the insulin many times, and I don't think it makes a difference. I think the insulin made a huge difference from the glucagon release. But again, you, nowadays you can get the glucagon or yeah. glucagon receptor agonism in the form of erythrocytide, and mm -hmm. then that's a lot more um, hypoglycemia friendly. So we got the second candidate in F tier, um, besides Tomasartan, it's uh, insulin pre fast cardio. Even though many of my former clients will be scratching their heads right now. It's like, why the fuck did we do that, Steve? <laughs> so, well, uh, Clemetrol is a three week detection time and injectable insulin doesn't. So, if you want to beat the drug test, then uh, right, you're going to have to make some sacrifices.